part one of the trojan women this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by expatriate in bangor maine the trojan women by euripides translated by edward p coleridge eighteen sixty three to nineteen thirty six part one dramatis personae poseidon athena hecuba chorus of captive trojan women talthybius cassandra andromache menelaus and helen scene before agamemnon's tent in the camp near troy the trojan women poseidon lo from the depths of salt aegean floods i poseidon come where choirs of nereids trip in the mazes of the graceful dance for since the day that phoebus and myself with measurement exact set towers of stone about this land of troy and ringed it round never from my heart hath passed away a kindly feeling for my phrygian town which now is smouldering and o'erthrown a prey to argive prowess for from his home beneath parnassus phocian epeus aided by the craft of pallas framed a horse to bear within its womb an armed host and sent it within the battlements fraught with death whence in days to come men shall tell of the wooden horse with its hidden load of warriors groves forsaken stand and temples of the gods run down with blood and at the altar's very base before the god who watched his home lies priam dead while to achaean ships great store of gold and phrygian spoils are being conveyed and they who came against this town those sons of hellas only wait a favouring breeze to follow in their wake that after ten long years they may with joy behold their wives and children vanquished by hera argive goddess and by athena who helped to ruin phrygia i am leaving ilium that famous town and the altars that i love for when drear desolation seizes on a town the worship of the gods decays and tends to lose respect scamander's banks re-echo long and loud the screams of captive maids as they by lot receive their masters arcadia taketh some and some the folk of thessaly others are assigned to theseus sons the athenian chiefs and such of the trojan dames as are not portioned out are in these tents set apart for the leaders of the host and with them spartan helen daughter of tyndarus justly counted among the captives and wouldst thou see that queen of misery hecuba thou canst for there she lies before the gates weeping many a bitter tear for many a tribulation for at achilles tomb though she knows not this her daughter polyxena has died most piteously likewise is priam dead and her children too cassandra whom the king apollo left to be a virgin frenzied maid hath agamemnon in contempt of the god's ordinance and of piety forced to a dishonoured wedlock farewell o city prosperous once farewell ye ramparts of hewn stone had not pallas daughter of zeus decreed thy ruin thou wert standing firmly still athena may i address the mighty god whom heaven reveres and who to my own sire is very nigh in blood laying aside our former enmity poseidon thou mayst for o'er the soul the ties of kin exert no feeble spell great queen athena athena for thy forgiving mood my thanks somewhat have i to impart affecting both thyself and me o king poseidon bringst thou fresh tidings from some god from zeus or from some lesser power athena from none of these but on behalf of troy whose soil we tread am i come to seek thy mighty aid to make it one with mine poseidon what hast thou laid thy former hate aside to take compassion on the town now that it is burnt to ashes athena first go back to the former point wilt thou make common cause with me in the scheme i purpose poseidon ay surely but i would fain learn thy wishes whether thou art come to help achaeans or phrygians athena 
i wish to give my former foes the trojans joy and on the achaean host impose a return that they will rue poseidon why leap'st thou thus from mood to mood thy love and hate both go too far on whomsoever centred athena dost not know the insult done to me and to the shrine i love poseidon surely in the hour that aias tore cassandra thence athena yea and the achaeans did naught said naught to him poseidon and yet twas by thy mighty aid they sacked ilium athena for which cause i would join with thee to work their bane poseidon my powers are ready at thy will what is thy intent athena a returning fraught with woe will i impose on them poseidon while yet they stay on shore or as they cross the briny deep athena when they have set sail from ilium for their homes on them will zeus also send his rain and fearful hail and inky tempest from the sky yea and he promises to grant me his levin bolts to hurl on the achaeans and fire their ships and do thou for thy part make the aegean straight to roar with mighty billows and whirlpools and fill eubea's hollow bay with corpses that achaeans may learn henceforth to reverence my temples and regard all other deities poseidon so shall it be for the boon thou cravest needs but few words i will vex the broad aegean sea and the beach of myconus and the reefs round delos skyrus and lemnos too and the cliffs of Capharius shall be strown with many a corpse mount thou to olympus and taking from thy father's hand his lightning bolts keep careful watch against the hour when argos hosts let slip its cables a fool is he who sacks the towns of men with shrines and tombs the dead man's hallowed home for at the last he makes a desert round himself and dies hecuba lift thy head unhappy lady from the ground thy neck upraise this is troy no more no longer am i queen in ilium though fortune change endure thy lot sail with the stream and follow fortune's tack steer not thy bark of life against the tide since chance must guide thy course ah me ah me what else but tears is now my hapless lot whose country children husband all are lost ah the high-blown pride of ancestors how cabined now how brought to nothing after all what woe must i suppress or what declare what plaintive dirge shall i awake ah woe is me the anguish i suffer lying here stretched upon this pallet hard oh my head my temples my side ah could i but turn over and lie now on this now on that to rest my back and spine while ceaselessly my tearful wail ascends for e'en this is music to the wretched to chant their cheerless dirge of sorrow ye swift proud ships rode to sacred ilium o'er the deep dark sea past the fair havens of hellas to the flute's ill-omened music and the dulcet voice of pipes even to the bays of troyland alack the day wherein ye tied your hawsers twisted handiwork from egypt in quest of that hateful wife of menelaus who brought disgrace on castor and on eurotas foul reproach murderous she of priam sire of fifty children it cause why i the hapless hecuba have wrecked my life upon this troublous strand oh that i should sit here o'er against the tent of agamemnon forth from my home to slavery they hail my aged frame while from my head in piteous wise the hair is shorn for grief ah hapless wives of those mail-clad sons of troy ah poor maidens luckless brides come weep for ilium is now but a smouldering ruin and i like some mother bird that o'er her fledgling screams will begin the strain how different from that song i sang to the gods in days long past as i leaned on priam's staff and beat with my foot in phrygian time to lead the dance first half chorus o oh, hecuba why these cries these piercing shrieks what mean thy words 
for i heard thy piteous wail echo through the building and a pang of terror shoots through each captive trojan's breast as pent within these walls they mourn their slavish lot hecuba my child e'en now the hands of argive rowers are busy at their ships first half chorus ah woe is me what is their intent will they really bear me hence in sorrow from my country in their fleet hecuba i know not though i guess our doom first half chorus o oh, misery woe to us trojan dames soon to hear the order given come forth from the house the argives are preparing to return hecuba oh do not bid the wild cassandra leave her chamber the frantic prophetess for argives to insult nor to my griefs add yet another woe to thee ill-fated troy thy sun is set and woe to thy unhappy children quick and dead alike who are leaving thee behind second half chorus with trembling step alas i leave this tent of agamemnon to learn of thee my royal mistress whether the argives have resolved to take my wretched life whether the sailors at the prow are making ready to ply their oars hecuba my child a fearful dread seized on my wakeful heart and sent me hither second half chorus hath a herald from the danai already come to whom am i poor captive given as a slave hecuba thou art not far from being allotted now second half chorus woe worth the day what argive or phytheotian chief will bear me far from troy alas unto his home or haply to some island fastness hecuba ah me ah me whose slave shall i become in my old age in what far clime a poor old drone the wretched copy of a corpse set to keep the gate or tend their children i who once held royal rank in troy chorus woe woe is thee what piteous dirge wilt thou devise to mourn the outrage done thee no more through ida's looms shall i ply the shuttle to and fro i look my last and latest on my children's bodies henceforth shall i endure surpassing misery it may be as the unwilling bride of some hellene perish the night and fortune that brings me to this it may be as a wretched slave i from pyrene's sacred fount shall draw their store of water o oh, be it ours to come to theseus famous realm a land of joy never never let me see eurotas swirling tide hateful home of helen there to meet and be the slave of menelaus whose hand laid troyland waste you holy land by peneus fed nestling in all its beauty at olympus foot is said so have i heard to be a very granary of wealth and teeming fruitage next to the sacred soil of theseus i could wish to reach that land they tell me too hephaestus home beneath the shadow of etna fronting phoenicia the mother of sicilian hills is famous for the crowns it gives to worth or may i find a home on that shore which lieth very nigh ionia's sea a land by crathis watered lovely stream that dyes the hair an auburn tint feeding with its holy waves and making glad therewith the home of heroes good and true but mark a herald from the host of danai with store of fresh proclamations comes hasting hither what is his errand what saith he list for we are slaves to dorian lords henceforth talthibius hecuba thou knowest me from my many journeys to and fro as herald twixt the achaean host and troy no stranger i to thee lady even aforetime i talthibius now sent with a fresh message hecuba ah kind friends tis come what i so long have dreaded talthibius the lot has decided your fates already if that was what you feared hecuba ah me what city didst thou say thessalian phythian or cadmian talthibius each warrior took his prize in turn ye were not all at once assigned hecuba to whom hath the lot assigned us severally which of us trojan dames doth a happy fortune await talthibius i know but ask thy questions separately not all at once hecuba then tell me whose prize is my daughter hapless cassandra talthibius king agamemnon hath chosen her out for himself hecuba to be the slave-girl of his spartan wife 
ah me talphibius nay to share with him his stealthy love hecuba what phoebus virgin priestess to whom the god with golden locks granted the boon of maidenhood talphibius the dart of love hath pierced his heart love for the frenzied maid hecuba daughter cast from thee the sacred keys and from thy body tear the holy wreaths that drape thee in their folds talphibius why is it not an honour high that she should win our monarch's love hecuba what have you done to her whom late ye took from me my child talphibius dost mean polyxena or whom dost thou inquire about hecuba to whom hath the law assigned her talphibius to minister at achilles tomb hath been appointed her hecuba woe is me i the mother of a dead man's slave what custom what ordinance is this amongst hellenes good sir talphibius count thy daughter happy tis well with her hecuba what wild words are these say is she still alive talphibius her fate is one that sets her free from trouble hecuba and what of mail-clad hector's wife sad andromache declare her fate talphibius she too was a chosen prize achilles son did take her hecuba as for me whose hair is white with age who need to hold a staff to be to me a third foot whose servant am i to be talphibius odysseus king of ithaca hath taken thee to be his slave hecuba o oh god now smite the close-shorn head tear your cheeks with your nails god help me i have fallen as a slave to a treacherous foe i hate a monster of lawlessness one that by his double tongue hath turned against us all that once was friendly in his camp changing this for that and that for this again o oh, weep for me ye trojan dames undone undone and lost ah oh, woe a victim to a most unhappy lot chorus thy fate royal mistress now thou knowest but for me what helene or achaean is master of my destiny talphibius ho servants haste and bring cassandra forth to me here that i may place her in our captain's hands and then conduct to the rest of the chiefs the captives each hath had assigned ha what is the blaze of torches there within what do these trojan dames are they firing the chambers because they must leave this land and be carried away to argos are they setting themselves aflame in their longing for death of a truth the free bear their troubles in cases like this with a stiff neck ho oh, there open lest their deed which suits them well but finds small favour with the achaeans bring blame on me hecuba tis not that they are setting aught ablaze but my child cassandra frenzied maid comes rushing wildly hither cassandra bring the light uplift and show its flame i am doing the god's service see see making his shrine to glow with tapers bright o hymen king of marriage blessed is the bridegroom blessed am i also the maiden soon to wed a princely lord in argos hail hymen king of marriage since thou my mother art ever busied with tears and lamentations in thy mourning for my father's death and for our country dear i at my own nuptials am making this torch to blaze and show its light in thy honour o hymen king of marriage grant thy light too hecate at the maiden's wedding as the custom is nimbly lift the foot aloft lead on the dance with cries of joy as if to greet my father's happy fate to dance i hold a sacred duty come phoebus lead the way for tis in thy temple mid thy bay trees that i minister hail hymen god of marriage hymen hail come mother mine and join the dance link thy steps with me and circle in the gladsome measure now here now there salute the bride on her wedding day with hymns and cries of joy come ye maids of phrygia in raiment fair sing my marriage with the husband fate ordains that i should wed chorus hold the frantic maiden royal mistress mine lest with nimble foot she rush to the argive army hecuba thou god of fire tis thine to light the bridal torch for men but piteous is the flame thou kindlest here beyond my blackest bodings 
ah my child how little did i ever dream that such would be thy marriage a captive and of argos too give up the torch to me thou dost not bear its blaze aright in thy wild frantic course nor have thy afflictions left thee in thy sober senses but still art thou as frantic as before take in those torches trojan friends and for her wedding madrigals weep your tears instead end of part one recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two of the trojan women by euripides translated by edward p coleridge eighteen sixty three to nineteen thirty six this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two cassandra o oh, mother crown my head with victor's wreaths rejoice in my royal match lead me to my lord nay if thou find me loath at all thrust me there by force for if loxias be indeed a prophet agamemnon that famous king of the achaeans will find in me a bride more fraught with woe to him than helen for i will slay him and lay waste his home to avenge my father's and my brethren's death but of the deed itself i will not speak nor will i tell of that axe which shall sever my neck and the necks of others or of the conflict ending in a mother's death which my marriage shall cause nor of the overthrow of atreus house but i for all my frenzy will so far rise above my frantic fit that i will prove this city happier far than those achaeans who for the sake of one woman and one man's love of her have lost a countless host in seeking helen their captain too whom men call wise hath lost for what he hated most what most he prized yielding to his brother for a woman's sake and she a willing prize whom no man forced the joy he had of his own children in his home for from the day that they did land upon scamander's strain their doom began not for loss of stolen frontier nor yet for fatherland with frowning towers whomso ares slew those never saw their babes again nor were they shrouded for the tomb by hand of wife but in a foreign land they lie at home the case was still the same wives were dying widows parents were left childless in their homes having reared their sons for others and none is left to make libations of blood upon the ground before their tombs truly to such praise as this their host can make an ample claim tis better to pass their shame in silence by nor be mine the muse to tell that evil tale but the trojans were dying first for their fatherland fairest fame to win whom so the sword laid low all these found friends to bear their bodies home and were laid to rest in the bosom of their native land their funeral rites all duly paid by duteous hands and all such phrygians as escaped the warrior's death lived ever day by day with wife and children by them joys the achaeans had left behind as for hector and his griefs prithee hear how stands the case he is dead and gone but still his fame remains as bravest of the brave and this was the result of the achaeans coming for had they remained at home his worth would have gone unnoticed so too with paris he married the daughter of zeus whereas had he never done so the alliance he made in his family would have been forgotten whoso is wise should fly from making war but if he be brought to this pass a noble death will crown his city with glory a coward's end with shame wherefore mother mine thou shouldst not pity thy country or my spousal for this my marriage will destroy those whom thou and i most hate chorus how sweetly at thy own sad lot thou smilest chanting a strain which spite of thee may prove thee wrong talphibius had not apollo turned thy wits astray thou shouldst not for nothing have sent my chiefs with such ominous predictions forth on their way but after all these lofty minds reputed wise are nothing better than those that are held as naught for that mighty king of all hellas own son of atreus has yielded to a passion for this mad maiden of all others though i am poor enough yet would i ne'er have chosen such a wife as this as for thee since thy senses are not whole i give thy taunts gainst argos and thy praise of troy to the winds to carry away follow me now to the ships to grace the wedding of our chief 
and thou too follow whensoe'er the son of laertes demands thy presence for thou wilt serve a mistress most discreet as all declare who came to ilium cassandra a clever fellow this menial why is it heralds hold the name they do all men unite in hating with one common hate the servants who attend on kings or governments thou sayest my mother shall come to the halls of odysseus where then be apollo's words so clear to me in their interpretation which declare that here she shall die what else remains i will not taunt her with little knows he the luckless wight the sufferings that await him or how these ills i and my phrygians endure shall one day seem to him precious as gold for beyond the ten long years spent at troy he shall drag out other ten and then come to his country all alone by the route where fell charybdis lurks in a narrow channel twixt the rocks past kyclops the savage shepherd and ligurian kirki that turneth men to swine shipwrecked oft upon the salt sea wave fain to eat the lotus and the sacred cattle of the sun whose flesh shall utter in the days to come a human voice fraught with misery to odysseus but to briefly end this history he shall descend alive to hades and though he scape the water's flood yet shall he find a thousand troubles in his home when he arrives enough why do i recount the troubles of odysseus lead on that i forthwith may wed my husband for his home in hades halls base thou art and basely shalt thou be buried in the dead of night when day is done thou captain of that host of danai who thinkest so proudly of thy fortune yea and my corpse cast forth in nakedness shall the rocky chasm with its flood of wintry waters give to wild beasts to make their meal upon hard by my husband's tomb me the handmaid of apollo farewell ye garlands of that god most dear to me farewell ye mystic symbols i here resign your feast my joy in days gone by go i tear ye from my body that while yet mine honour is intact i may give them to the rushing winds to waft to thee my prince of prophecy where is yon general's ship whither must i go to take my place thereon lose no further time in watching for a favouring breeze to fill thy sails doomed as thou art to carry from this land one of the three avenging spirits fare thee well mother mine dry thy tears o country dear yet a little while my brother sleeping in the tomb and my own father true and ye shall welcome me yet shall victory crown my advent mongst the dead when i have overthrown the home of our destroyers the house of the sons of atreus chorus ye guardians of the grey-haired hecuba see how your mistress is sinking speechless to the ground take hold of her will ye let her fall ye worthless slaves lift up again from where it lies her silvered head hecuba leave me lying where i fell my maidens unwelcome service grows not welcome ever my sufferings now my troubles past afflictions yet to come all claim this lowly posture gods of heaven small help i find in calling such allies yet is there something in the form of invoking heaven when so we fall on evil days first will i descant upon my former blessings so shall i inspire the greater pity for my present woes born to royal estate and wedded to a royal lord i was the mother of a race of gallant sons no mere ciphers they but phrygia's chiefest pride children such as no trojan or hellenic or barbarian mother ever had to boast all these have i seen slain by the spear of hellas and at their tombs have i shorn off my hair with these my eyes i saw their sire my priam butchered on his own hearth and my city captured nor did others bring this bitter news to me the maidens i brought up to see chosen for some marriage high for strangers have i reared them and seen them snatched away never more can i hope to be seen by them nor shall my eyes behold them ever in the days to come and last to crown my misery shall i be brought to hellas a slave in my old age and there the tasks that least befit the evening of my life will they impose on me to watch their gates and keep the keys me hector's mother or bake their bread and on the ground instead of my royal bed lay down my shrunken limbs 
with tattered rags about my wasted frame a shameful garb for those who once were prosperous ah woe is me and this is what i bear and am to bear for one weak woman's wooing o oh, my daughter o oh, cassandra whom gods have summoned to their frenzied train how cruel the lot that ends thy virgin days and thou polyxena my child of sorrow where o oh, where art thou none of all the many sons and daughters i have borne comes to aid a wretched mother why then raise me up what hope is left us guide me who erst trod so daintily the streets of troy but now am but a slave to a bed upon the ground nigh some rocky ridge that thence i may cast me down and perish after i have wasted my body with weeping of all the prosperous crowd count none a happy man before he die chorus sing me muse a tale of troy a funeral dirge in strains unheard as yet with tears the while for now will i uplift for troy a piteous chant telling how i met my doom and fell a wretched captive to the argives by reason of a four-footed beast that moved on wheels in the hour that achaea's sons left at our gates that horse loud rumbling on its way with its trappings of gold and its freight of warriors and our folk cried out as they stood upon the rocky citadel up now ye whose toil is o'er and drag this sacred image to the shrine of the zeus-born maiden goddess of our ilium forth from his house came every youth and every grey head too and with songs of joy they took the fatal snare within then hastened all the race of phrygia to the gates to make the goddess a present of an argive band ambushed in the polished mountain pine dardania's ruin a welcome gift to be to her the virgin queen of deathless steeds and with nooses of cord they dragged it as it had been a ship's dark hull to the stone-built fane of the goddess palace and set it on that floor so soon to drink our country's blood but as they laboured and made merry came on the pitchy night loud the libyan flute was sounding and phrygian songs awoke while maidens beat the ground with airy foot uplifting their gladsome song and in the halls a blaze of torchlight shed its flickering shadows on sleeping eyes in that hour around the house was i singing as i danced to that maiden of the hills the child of zeus when lo there rang along the town a cry of death which filled the homes of troy and little babes in terror clung about their mother's skirts as forth from their ambush came the warrior band the handiwork of maiden palace anon the altars ran with phrygian blood and desolation reigned o'er every bed where young men lay beheaded a glorious crown for hellas won i for her the nurse of youth but for our phrygian fatherland a bitter grief look hecuba dost see andromache advancing hither on a foreign car and with her clasped to her throbbing breast is her dear astyanax hector's child hecuba whither art thou born unhappy wife mounted on that car side by side with hector's brazen arms and phrygian spoils of war with which achilles son will deck the shrines of phthia on his return from troy andromache my achaean masters drag me hence hecuba woe is thee andromache why dost thou in note of woe utter the dirge that is mine hecuba ah oh, me andromache for these sorrows hecuba o oh, zeus andromache and for this calamity hecuba o oh, my children andromache our day is past hecuba joy is fled and troy o'erthrown andromache woe is me hecuba dead too all my gallant sons andromache alack and well a day hecuba ah oh, me for my andromache misery hecuba piteous the fate andromache of our city hecuba smouldering in the smoke andromache come my husband come to me hecuba ah hapless wife thou callest on my son who lieth in the tomb andromache thy wife's defender come hecuba 
do thou who erst didst make the achaeans grieve eldest of the sons i bear to priam in the days gone by take me to thy rest in hades halls andromache bitter are these regrets unhappy mother bitter these woes to bear our city ruined and sorrow evermore to sorrow added through the will of angry heaven since the day that son of thine escaped his doom he that for a bride accursed brought destruction on the trojan citadel there lie the gory corpses of the slain by the shrine of pallas for vultures to carry off and troy is come to slavery's yoke hecuba o oh, my country o oh, unhappy land i weep for thee now left behind now dost thou behold thy piteous end and thee my house i weep wherein i suffered travail o oh, my children reft of her city as your mother is she now is losing you o oh, what mourning and what sorrow o oh, what endless streams of tears in our houses the dead alone forget their griefs and never shed a tear chorus what sweet relief to sufferers tis to weep to mourn lament and chant the dirge that tells of grief andromache dost thou see this mother of that hector who once laid low in battle many a son of argos hecuba i see that it is heaven's way to exalt what men accounted naught and ruin what they most esteemed andromache hence with my child as booty am i born the noble are to slavery brought a bitter bitter change hecuba this is necessity's grim law it was but now cassandra was torn with brutal violence from my arms andromache alas alas it seems a second aias hath appeared to wrong thy daughter but there be other ills for thee hecuba ay beyond all count or measure are my sorrows evil vies with evil in the struggle to be first andromache thy daughter polyxena is dead slain at achilles tomb and offering to his lifeless corpse hecuba oh woe is me this is that riddle talthybius long since told me a truth obscurely uttered andromache i saw her with mine eyes so i alighted from the chariot and covered her corpse with a mantle and smote upon my breast hecuba alas my child for thy unhallowed sacrifice and yet again ah me for this thy shameful death andromache her death was even as it was and yet that death of hers was after all a happier fate than this my life hecuba death and life are not the same my child the one is annihilation the other keeps a place for hope andromache hear o mother of children give ear to what i urge so well that i may cheer my drooping spirit tis all one i say ne'er to have been born and to be dead and better far is death than life with misery for the dead feel no sorrow any more and know no grief but he who has known prosperity and has fallen on evil days feels his spirit straying from the scene of former joys now that child of thine is dead as though she ne'er had seen the light and little she recks of her calamity whereas i who aimed at a fair repute though i won a higher lot than most yet missed my luck in life for all that stamps the wife a woman chaste i strove to do in hector's home in the first place whether there is a slur upon a woman or whether there is not the very fact of her not staying at home brings in its train an evil name therefore i gave up any wish to do so and abode ever within my house nor would i admit the clever gossip women love but conscious of a heart that told an honest tale i was content therewith and ever would i keep a silent tongue and modest eye before my lord and well i knew where i might rule my lord and where twas best to yield to him the fame whereof hath reached the achaean host and proved my ruin for when i was taken captive achilles son would have me as his wife and i must serve in the house of murderers and if i set aside my love for hector and ope my heart to this new lord i shall appear a traitress to the dead while if i hate him i shall incur my master's displeasure and yet they say a single night removes a woman's dislike for her husband 
nay i do hate the woman who when she hath lost her former lord transfers her love by marrying another not e'en the horse if from his fellow torn will cheerfully draw the yoke and yet the brutes have neither speech nor sense to help them and are by nature man's inferiors o oh, hector mine in thee i found a husband amply dowered with wisdom noble birth and fortune a brave man and a mighty while thou didst take me from my father's house a spotless bride thyself the first to make this maiden wife but now death hath claimed thee and i to hellas am soon to sail a captive doomed to wear the yoke of slavery hath not then the dead polyxena for whom thou wailest less evil to bear than i i have not so much as hope the last resource of every human heart nor do i beguile myself with dreams of future bliss the very thought whereof is sweet chorus thou art in the self-same plight as i thy lamentations for thyself remind me of my own sad case hecuba i never yet have set foot on a ship's deck though i have seen such things in pictures and know of them from hearsay now sailors if there come a storm of moderate force are all eagerness to save themselves by toil one at the tiller stands another sets himself to work the sheets a third meantime is bailing out the ship but if tempestuous waves arise to overwhelm them they yield to fortune and commit themselves to the driving billows even so i by reason of my countless troubles am dumb and forbear to say a word for heaven with its surge of misery is too strong for me cease o oh, cease my darling child to speak of hector's fate no tears of thine can save him honour thy present lord offering thy sweet nature as the bait to win him if thou do this thou wilt cheer thy friends as well as thyself and thou shalt rear my hector's child to lend stout aid to ilium that so thy children in the aftertime may build her up again and our city yet be established but lo our talk must take a different turn who is this achaean menial i see coming hither sent to tell us of some new design enter talphibius end of part two recording by expatriate in bangor maine part three of the trojan women by euripides translated by edward p coleridge eighteen sixty three to nineteen thirty six this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part three talphibius o oh, hate me not thou that erst were hector's wife the bravest of the phrygians for my tongue would fain not tell that which the danai and sons of pelops both command andromache what is it thy prelude bodeth evil news talphibius tis decreed thy son is how can i tell my news andromache surely not to have a different master from me talphibius none of all achaea's chiefs shall ever lord it over him andromache is it their will to leave him here a remnant yet of phrygia's race talphibius i know no words to break the sorrow lightly to thee andromache i thank thee for thy consideration unless indeed thou hast good news to tell talphibius they mean to slay thy son there is my hateful message to thee andromache o oh god this is worse tidings than my forced marriage talphibius so spake odysseus to the assembled hellenes and his word prevails andromache o oh, once again ah me there is no measure in the woes i bear talphibius he said they should not rear so brave a father's son andromache may such counsels yet prevail about children of his talphibius from troy's battlements he must be thrown let it be even so and thou wilt show more wisdom cling not to him but bear thy sorrows with heroic heart nor in thy weakness deem that thou art strong for nowhere hast thou any help consider this thou must thy husband and thy city are no more so thou art in our power and i alone am match enough for one weak woman 
wherefore i would not see thee bent on strife or any course to bring thee shame or hate nor would i hear thee rashly curse the achaeans for if thou say aught whereat the host grow wroth this child will find no burial nor pity either but if thou hold thy peace and with composure take thy fate thou wilt not leave his corpse unburied and thyself wilt find more favour with the achaeans andromache my child my own sweet babe and priceless treasure thy death the foe demands and thou must leave thy wretched mother that which saves the lives of others proves thy destruction even thy sire's nobility to thee thy father's valiancy has proved no boon oh the woeful wedding rites that brought me erst to hector's home hoping to be the mother of a son that should rule over asia's fruitful fields instead of serving as a victim to the sons of danaus dost weep my babe dost know thy hapless fate why clutch me with thy hands and to my garment cling nestling like a tender chick beneath my wing hector will not rise again and come gripping his famous spear to bring thee salvation no kinsman of thy sire appears nor might of phrygian hosts one awful headlong leap from the dizzy height and thou wilt dash out thy life with none to pity thee o oh, to clasp thy tender limbs a mother's fondest joy o oh, to breathe thy fragrant breath in vain it seems these breasts did suckle thee wrapped in thy swaddling clothes all for naught i used to toil and wore myself away kiss thy mother now for the last time nestle to her that bare thee twine thine arms about my neck and join thy lips to mine o oh, ye hellenes cunning to devise new forms of cruelty why slay this child who never wronged any thou daughter of tyndarus thou art no child of zeus but sprung i trow of many a sire first of some evil demon next of envy then of murder and of death and every horror that the earth begets that zeus was never sire of thine i boldly do assert bane as thou hast been to many a hellene and barbarian too destruction catch thee those fair eyes of thine have brought a shameful ruin on the fields of glorious troy take the babe and bear him hence hurl him down if so ye list then feast upon his flesh tis heaven's high will we perish and i cannot ward the deadly stroke from my child hide me in my misery cast me into the ship's hold for tis to a fair wedding i am going now that i have lost my child chorus unhappy troy thy thousands thou hast lost for one woman's sake and her accursed wooing talthybius come child leave fond embracing of thy woeful mother and mount the high coronal of thy ancestral towers there to draw thy parting breath as is ordained take him hence his should the duty be to do such herald's work whose heart knows no pity and who loveth ruthlessness more than my soul doth exeunt andromache and talthybius with astyanax hecuba o oh, child son of my hapless boy an unjust fate robs me and thy mother of thy life how is it with me what can i do for thee my luckless babe for thee i smite upon my head and beat my breast my only gift for that alone is in my power woe for my city woe for thee is not our cup full what is wanting now to our utter and immediate ruin chorus o telamon king of solomus the feeding ground of bees who hast thy home in a sea-girt isle that lieth nigh the holy hills where first athena made the grey olive branch to appear a crown for heavenly heads and a glory unto happy athens thou didst come in knightly brotherhood with that great archer alcmena's son to sack our city ilium in days gone by on thy advent from hellas what time he led the chosen flower of hellas vexed for the steeds denied him and at the fair stream of simois he stayed his sea-borne ship and fastened cables to the stern and forth therefrom he took the bow his hand could deftly shoot to be the doom of laomedon and with the ruddy breath of fire he wasted the masonry squared by phoebus line and chisel and sacked the land of troy 
so twice in two attacks hath the blood-stained spear destroyed dardania's walls in vain it seems thou phrygian boy pacing with dainty step amid thy golden chalices dost thou fill high the cup of zeus a service passing fair seeing that the land of thy birth is being consumed by fire the shore re-echoes to our cries and as a bird bewails its young so we bewail our husbands or our children or our grey-haired mothers the dew-fed springs where thou didst bathe the course where thou didst train are now no more but thou beside the throne of zeus art sitting with a calm sweet smile upon thy fair young face while the spear of hellas lays the land of priam waste ah love love who once did seek these dardan halls deep-seated in the hearts of heavenly gods how high didst thou make troy to tower in those days allying her with deities but i will cease to urge reproaches against zeus for white-winged dawn whose light to man is dear turned a baleful eye upon our land and watched the ruin of our citadel though she had within her bridal bower a husband from this land whom on a day a car of gold and spangled stars caught up and carried thither great source of hope to his native country but all the love the gods once had for troy is passed away menelaus hail thou radiant orb by whose fair light i now shall capture her that was my wife e'en helen for i am that menelaus who hath toiled so hard i and achaia's host to troy i came not so much as men supposed to take this woman but to punish him who from my house stole my wife traitor to my hospitality but he by heaven's will hath paid the penalty ruined and his country too by the spear of hellas and i am come to bear that spartan woman hence wife i have no mind to call her though she once was mine for now she is but one among the other trojan dames who share these tents as captives for they the very men who toiled to take her with the spear have granted her to me to slay or if i will to spare and carry back with me to argos now my purpose is not to put her to death in troy but to carry her to hellas in my sea-borne ship and then surrender her to death a recompense to all whose friends were slain in ilium ho my trusty men enter the tent and drag her out to me by her hair with many a murder foul and when a favouring breeze shall blow to hellas will we convey her hecuba o thou that dost support the earth and restest thereupon whosoe'er thou art a riddle past our ken be thou zeus or natural necessity or man's intellect to thee i pray for though thou treadest o'er a noiseless path all thy dealings with mankind are by justice guided menelaus how now strange the prayer thou offerest unto heaven hecuba i thank thee menelaus if thou wilt slay that wife of thine yet shun the sight of her lest she smite thee with regret for she ensnares the eyes of men o'erthrows their towns and burns their houses so potent are her witcheries well i know her so dost thou and those her victims too helen menelaus this prelude well may fill me with alarm for i am hailed with violence by thy servants hands and brought before these tents still though i am well nigh sure thou hatest me yet would i fain inquire what thou and hellas have decided about my life menelaus to judge thy case required no great exactness the host with one consent that host whom thou didst wrong handed thee over to me to die helen may i answer this decision proving that my death if to die i am will be unjust menelaus i came not to argue but to slay thee hecuba hear her menelaus let her not die for want of that and let me answer her again for thou knowest not of her villainies in troy and the whole case if thus summed up will ensure her death against all chance of an escape menelaus this boon needs leisure still if she wishes to speak the leave is given yet will i grant her this because of thy words that she may hear them and not for her own sake helen perhaps thou wilt not answer me from counting me a foe whether my words seem good or ill 
yet will i put my charges in thine over against each other and then reply to the accusations i suppose thou wilt advance against me first then she was the author of these troubles by giving birth to paris next old priam ruined troy and me because he did not slay his babe alexander baleful semblance of a firebrand long ago hear what followed this paris was to judge the claims of three rival goddesses so pallas offered him command of all the phrygians and the destruction of hellas hera promised he should spread his dominion over asia and the utmost bounds of europe if he would decide for her but cypris spoke in rapture of my loveliness and promised him this boon if she should have the preference o'er those twain for beauty now mark the inference i deduce from this cypris won the day o'er them and thus far hath my marriage proved a benefit to hellas that ye are not subject to barbarian rule neither vanquished in the strife nor yet by tyrants crushed what hellas gained was ruin to me a victim for my beauty sold and now am i reproached for that which should have set a crown upon my head but thou wilt say i am silent on the real matter at issue how it was i started forth and left thy house by stealth with no mean goddess at his side he came my evil genius call him alexander or paris as thou wilt and him didst thou thrice guilty wretch leave behind thee in thy house and sail away from sparta to the land of crete enough of this for all that followed i must question my own heart not thee what frantic thought led me to follow the stranger from thy house traitress to my country and my home punish the goddess show thyself more mighty even than zeus who though he lords it o'er the other gods is yet her slave wherefore i may well be pardoned still from hence thou mightest draw a specious argument against me when paris died and earth concealed his corpse i should have left his house and sought the argive fleet since my marriage was no longer in the hands of gods that was what i fain had done yea and the warders on the towers and watchmen on the walls can bear me witness for oft they found me seeking to let myself down stealthily by cords from the battlements but there was that new husband diphobus that carried me off by force to be his wife against the will of troy how then my lord could i be justly put to death by thee with any show of right seeing that he wedded me against my will and those my other natural gifts have served a bitter slavery instead of leading on to triumph if tis thy will indeed to master gods that very wish displays thy folly chorus o my royal mistress defend thy children's and thy country's cause bringing to naught her persuasive arguments for she pleads well in spite of all her villainy tis monstrous this hecuba first will i take up the cause of those goddesses and prove how she perverts the truth for i can ne'er believe that hera or the maiden pallas would have been guilty of such folly as to sell the one her argos to barbarians or that pallas e'er would make her athens subject to the phrygians coming as they did in mere wanton sport to ida to contest the palm of beauty for why should goddess hera set her heart so much on such a prize was it to win a nobler lord than zeus or was athena bent on finding amongst the gods a husband she who in her dislike of marriage won from her sire the boon of remaining unwed seek not to impute folly to the goddesses in the attempt to gloze over thine own sin never wilt thou persuade the wise next thou hast said what well may make men jeer that cypris came with my son to the house of menelaus could she not have stayed quietly in heaven and brought thee in amically to boot to ilium nay my son was passing fair and when thou sawest him thy fancy straight became thy cypris for every sensual act that men commit they lay upon this goddess and rightly does her name of aphrodite begin the word for senselessness so when thou didst catch sight of him in gorgeous foreign garb ablaze with gold thy senses utterly forsook thee yea for an argos thou hadst moved in simple state but once free of sparta twas thy fond hope to deluge by thy lavish outlay phrygia's town that flowed with gold nor was the palace of menelaus rich enough for thy luxury to riot in ha my son carried thee off by force so thou sayest what spartan saw this 
what cry for help didst thou ever raise though castor was still alive a vigorous youth and his brother also not yet amid the stars then when thou wert come to troy and the argives were on thy track and the mortal combat was begun whenever tidings came to thee of menelaus prowess him wouldst thou praise to grieve my son because he had so powerful a rival in his love but if so the trojans prospered menelaus was nothing to thee thy eye was fixed on fortune and by such practice wert thou careful to follow in her steps careless of virtue's cause and then in spite of all thou dost assert that thou didst try to let thyself down from the towers by stealth with twisted cords as if loath to stay pray then wert thou ever found fastening the noose about thy neck or wetting the knife as a noble wife would have done in regret for her former husband and yet full oft i advise thee saying get thee gone daughter and let my sons take other brides i will help thee to steal away and convey thee to the achaean fleet o oh, end the strife twixt us and hellas but this was bitter in thy ears for thou wert wantoning in alexander's house fain to have obeisance done thee by barbarians yes twas a proud time for thee and now after all this thou hast bedizened thyself and come forth and hast dared to appear under the same sky as thy husband revolting wretch better hast thou come in tattered raiment cowering humbly in terror with hair shorn short if for thy past sins thy feeling were one of shame rather than effrontery o menelaus hear the conclusion of my argument crown hellas by slaying her as she deserves and establish this law for all others of her sex e'en death to every traitress to her husband chorus avenge thee menelaus on thy wife as is worthy of thy home and ancestors clear thyself from the reproach of effeminacy at the lips of hellas and let thy foes see thy spirit end of part three recording by expatriate in bangor maine part four of the trojan women by euripides translated by edward p coleridge eighteen sixty three to nineteen thirty six this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part four menelaus thy thoughts with mine do coincide that she without constraint left my palace and sought a stranger's love and now Cyprus is introduced for mere bluster. Away to those who shall stone thee, and by thy speedy death requite the weary toils of the Achaeans, that thou mayst learn not to bring shame on me. Helen, oh, by thy knees I implore thee, impute not that heaven-sent affliction to me, nor slay me, pardon, I entreat. Hecuba, be not false to thy allies, whose death this woman caused, on their behalf and for my children's sake i sue to thee menelaus peace reverend dame to her i pay no heed lo i bid my servants take her hence aboard the ship wherein she is to sail hecuba oh never let her set foot within the same ship as thee menelaus how now is she heavier than of yore hecuba who loveth once must love alway menelaus why that depends how those we love are minded but thy wish shall be granted she shall not set foot upon the same ship with me for thy advice is surely sound and when she comes to argos she shall die a shameful death as is her due and impress the need of chastity on all her sex no easy task yet shall her fate strike their foolish hearts with terror e'en though they be more lost to shame than she exit menelaus dragging helen with him chorus so then thou hast delivered into achaia's hand o zeus thy shrine in ilium and thy fragrant altar the offerings of burnt sacrifice with smoke of myrrh to heaven uprising and holy pergamos and glens of ida tangled with the ivy's growth where rills of melting snow pour down their flood a holy sunlit land that bounds the world and takes the gods first rays gone are thy sacrifices gone the dancer's cheerful shout 
gone the vigils of the gods as night closed in thy images of carven gold are now no more and phrygia's holy festivals twelve times a year at each full moon are ended now tis this that filleth me with anxious thought whether thou o king seated on the sky thy heavenly throne carest at all that my city is destroyed a prey to the furious fiery blast ah my husband fondly loved thou art a wandering spectre unwashed unburied lies thy corpse while o'er the sea the ship sped by wings will carry me to argos land of steeds where stand cyclopean walls of stone upreared to heaven there in the gate the children gather hanging round their mother's necks and weep their piteous lamentation o mother woe is me torn from thy sight achaeans bear me away from thee to their dark ship to row me o'er the deep to sacred salamis or to the hill on the isthmus that overlooks two seas the key to the gates of pelops o may the blazing thunderbolt hurled in might from its holy home smite the bark of menelaus full amidships as it is crossing the aegean main since he is carrying me away in bitter sorrow from the shores of ilium to be a slave in hellas while the daughter of zeus still keeps her golden mirrors delight of maidens hearts never may he reach his home in laconia or his father's hearth and home nor come to the town of Pitane, or the temple of the goddess with the gates of bronze, having taken as his captive her whose marriage brought disgrace on Hellas, through its length and breadth and woeful anguish on the streams of Simois. Ah me, ah me, new troubles on my country fall to take the place of those that still are fresh. Behold, ye hapless wives of Troy, the corpse of Astyanax whom the danai have cruelly slain by hurling him from the battlements enter talthybius and attendants bearing the corpse of astyanax on hector's shield talthybius hecuba one ship alone delays its plashing oars and it is soon to sail to the shores of phythia freighted with the remnant of the spoils of achilles son for neoptolemus is already out at sea having heard that new calamities have befallen peleus for acostus son of peleus hath banished him the realm wherefore he is gone too quick to indulge in any delay and with him goes andromache who drew many a tear from me what time she started hence wailing her country and crying her farewell to hector's tomb and she craved her master leave to bury this poor dead child of hector who breathed his last when from the turrets hurled entreating too that he would not carry this shield the terror of the achaeans this shield with plates of brass wherewith his father would gird himself to the home of peleus or to the same bridal bower whither she herself the mother of this corpse would be led a bitter sight to her but let her bury the child therein instead of in a coffin of cedar or a tomb of stone and to thy hands commit the corpse that thou mayst deck it with robes and garlands as best thou canst with thy present means for she is far away and her master's haste prevented her from burying the child herself so we when thou the corpse hast decked will heap the earth above and set thereon a spear but do thou with thy best speed perform thy allotted task one toil however have i already spared thee for i crossed scamander's stream and bathed the corpse and cleansed its wounds but now will i go to dig a grave for him that our united efforts shortening our task may speed our ship towards home exit talthybius hecuba place the child upon the ground hector's shield so deftly rounded a piteous sight a bitter grief for me to see o ye achaeans more reason have ye to boast of your prowess than your wisdom why have ye in terror of this child been guilty of a murder never matched before did ye fear that some day he would rear again the fallen walls of troy it seems then ye were nothing after all when though hector's fortunes in the war were prosperous and he had ten thousand other arms to back him we still were daily overmatched and yet now that our city is taken and every phrygian slain ye fear a tender babe like this out upon his fear say i who fears but never yet hath reasoned out the cause ah my beloved thine is a piteous death indeed 
hadst thou died for thy city when thou hadst tasted of the sweets of manhood of marriage and of godlike power or others then wert thou blessed if aught herein is blessed but now after one glimpse one dream thereof thou knowest them no more my child and hast no joy of them though heir to all ah poor babe how sadly have thy own father's walls those towers that loxias reared shorn from thy head the locks thy mother fondled and so oft caressed from which through fractured bones the face of murder grins briefly to dismiss my shocking theme o oh, hands how sweet the likeness ye retain of his father and yet ye lie limp in your sockets before me dear mouth so often full of words of pride death hath closed thee and thou hast not kept the promise thou didst make when nestling in my robe ah mother mine many a lock of my hair will i cut off for thee and to thy tomb will lead my troops of friends taking a fond farewell of thee but now tis not thy hand that buries me but i on whom is come old age with loss of home and children am burying thee a tender child untimely slain ah me those kisses numberless the nurture that i gave to thee those sleepless nights they all are lost what shall the bard inscribe upon thy tomb about thee argives once for fear of him slew this child foul shame should that inscription be to hellas o child though thou hast no part in all thy father's wealth yet shalt thou have his brazen shield wherein to find a tomb ah shield that didst keep safe the comely arm of hector now hast thou lost thy valiant keeper how fair upon thy handle lies his imprint and on the rim that circles round the targe are marks of sweat that trickled off from hector's brow as he pressed it gainst his beard in battle's stress come bring forth from such store as we have adornment for the hapless dead for fortune gives no chance now for offerings fair yet of such as i possess shalt thou receive these gifts foolish mortal he who thinks his luck secure and so rejoices for fortune like a madman in her moods springs towards this man then towards that and none ever experiences the same unchanging luck chorus lo all is ready and they are bringing at thy bidding from the spoils of troy garniture to put upon the dead hecuba ah oh, my child tis not as victor o'er thy comrades with horse or bow customs troy esteems without pursuing them to excess that hector's mother decks thee now with ornaments from the store that once was thine though now hath helen whom the gods abhor reft thee of thine own yea and robbed thee of thy life and caused thy house to perish root and branch chorus woe thrice woe my heart is touched and thou the cause my mighty prince in days now past hecuba about thy body now i swathe this phrygian robe of honour which should have clad thee on thy marriage day wedded to the noblest of asia's daughters thou too dear shield of hector victorious parent of countless triumphs past accept thy crown for though thou share the dead child's tomb death cannot touch thee for thou dost merit honours far beyond those arms that the crafty knave odysseus won chorus alas ah me thee o oh child shall earth take to her breast a cause for bitter weeping mourn thou mother hecuba ah me chorus wail for the dead hecuba woe is me chorus alas for thy unending sorrow hecuba thy wounds in part will i bind up with bandages a wretched leech in name alone without reality but for the rest thy sire must look to that amongst the dead chorus smite o oh, smite upon thy head with frequent blow of hand woe is me hecuba my kind good friends chorus speak out hecuba the word that was on thy lips hecuba it seems the only things that heaven concerns itself about are my troubles and troy hateful in their eyes above all other cities in vain did we sacrifice to them had not the god caught us in his grip 
and plunged us headlong neath the earth we should have been unheard of nor ever sung in muses songs furnishing to bards of after days a subject for their minstrelsy go bury now in his poor tomb the dead wreathed all duly as befits a corpse and yet i deem it makes but little difference to the dead although they get a gorgeous funeral for this is but a cause of idle pride to the living the corpse is carried off to burial chorus alas for thy unhappy mother who o'er thy corpse hath closed the high hopes of her life born of a noble stock counted most happy in thy lot ah what a tragic death is thine ha who are those i see on yonder pinnacles darting to and fro with flaming torches in their hands some new calamity will soon on troy alight soldiers are seen on the battlements of troy torch in hand talthybius ye captains whose allotted task it is to fire this town of priam to you i speak no longer keep the firebrand idle in your hands but launch the flame that when we have destroyed the city of ilium we may set forth in gladness on our homeward voyage from troy in you ye sons of troy to let my orders take at once a double form start for the achaean ships for your departure hence soon as ever the leaders of the host blow loud and clear upon the trumpet and thou unhappy grey-haired dame follow for yonder come servants from odysseus to fetch thee for to him thou art assigned by lot to be a slave far from thy country hecuba ah woe is me this surely is the last the utmost limit this of all my sorrows forth from my land i go my city is ablaze with flame yet thou aged foot make one painful struggle to hasten that i may say a farewell to this wretched town o troy that erst had such a grand career amongst barbarian towns soon wilt thou be reft of that splendid name lo they are burning thee and leading us e'en now from our land to slavery great gods yet why call on the gods they did not hearken even aforetime to our call come let us rush into the flames for to die with my country in its blazing ruin were a noble death for me talthybius thy sorrows drive thee frantic poor lady go lead her hence make no delay for ye must deliver her into the hand of odysseus conveying to him his prize hecuba o son of kronos prince of phrygia father of our race dost thou behold our sufferings now unworthy of the stock of dardanus chorus he sees them but our mighty city is a city no more and troy's day is done hecuba woe thrice woe upon me ilium is ablaze the homes of pergamos and its towering walls are now one sheet of flame chorus as the smoke soars on wings to heaven so sinks our city to the ground before the spear with furious haste both fire and foeman's spear devour each house hecuba hearken my children hear your mother's voice chorus thou art calling on the dead with voice of lamentation hecuba yea as i stretch my aged limbs upon the ground and beat upon the earth with both my hands chorus i follow thee and kneel invoking from the nether world my hapless husband hecuba i am being dragged and hurried away chorus o oh, the sorrow of that cry hecuba from my own dear country to dwell beneath a master's roof woe is me o priam priam slain unburied left without a friend naught dost thou know of my cruel fate chorus no for o'er his eyes black death hath drawn his pall a holy man by sinners slain hecuba woe for the temples of the gods woe for our dear city chorus woe hecuba murderous flame and foeman's spear are now your lot chorus soon will ye tumble to your own loved soil and be forgotten hecuba and the dust mounting to heaven on wings like smoke will rob me of the sight of my home chorus the name of my country will pass into obscurity all is scattered far and wide 
and hapless troy has ceased to be hecuba did you hear that and know its purport chorus ay twas the crash of the citadel hecuba the shock will whelm our city utterly o oh, woe is me trembling quaking limbs support my footsteps away to face the day that begins thy slavery chorus woe for our unhappy town and yet to the achaean fleet advance hecuba woe for thee o land that nursed my little babes chorus ah woe end of part four recording by expatriate in bangor maine end of the trojan women by euripides translated by edward p coleridge eighteen sixty three to nineteen thirty six